moist clay is a material of many modes and is far from a matured vessel fit to be used. Once the material is ready to be shaped, the potter divides the clay into small units, then proceeds to make it up into the vessel she has purposed. Now the clay begins to feel the harsh reality of getting shaped. The potter who works with the wheel takes the pliable clay in his hands and places it perfectly at the center of the wheel. Being centered is very crucial to its becoming. We can compare the act of centering to the act of surrendering oneself to God and His way of fashioning. He spins the wheel around, bringing the clay against his hands and smoothens out all the imperfections He makes the clay respond to the dynamism of his sensitive hands. He pushes down the lump of clay from the top to create an opening in it. Through this opening, he goes down deep inside. He runs his fingers in and around the clay, giving pressure and direction. There is a simultaneous move of the clay and the hands, giving depth and dimension to the intended piece. Thus, working on both the inside and the outside, he molds the clay, shapes it and transforms it into the pot he wants it to be as it continues to spin on the wheel. The careful and fine movements of fingers keep fashioning the pot, shaping and reshaping. The fingers give expression to the potter's mind. Any negligence from the potter would damage his creative venture. Therefore, the potter handles this course of action with utmost care and undivided attention. The turning wheel of the potter represents the changing circumstances of human lives, directing us to the molding fingers of the potter. Unlike the clay, we have freedom to choose and the choices we make shape the process of our becoming. Every turn of the wheel adds to a new shape, a new creation and a new dynamism. Without its spinning, in vain would the potter work. At every turn, the potter applies certain pressure and directs our moves against the currents of falsehood and imperfections. This involvement of God creates friction and discontent and we tend to wonder why God puts so much pain into our lives. At times, a unique mold is created for each shape. The potter carefully places the moist clay over it, turning the clay into its intended image. Once the potter is satisfied with the initial shape of the pot, it is then placed under the scorching heat of the sun to dry. It looks like the pot is ready. No, far from it. It is just at the initial stage of becoming. 
after the pot is partially dry, the potter takes it back again into his hands. The pot is in for a big shock. The pot wonders, I am looking so beautiful, I am ready to serve, then why is he hammering me again? It's too painful. The potter keeps hammering and remolding the pot until it reaches the desired shape. We may think, I am a good person, I do not trouble anybody, I am a devotee, I pray regularly, I do a lot of charitable deeds, then why so much suffering in my life? The pot is then put to dry, only to be taken back again and to be hammered after a while. The process of making and becoming covers a series of attempts and failures, shaping and reshaping. Human life is an ongoing process. It is a constant learning and becoming. Just as the pot in its initial stage never understands the final dream of his master, so are we at certain times. Limited as we are, we pass through the circumstances of life in utter frustration. The stage of molding entails a complete surrender and trust in the potter who has a reason and vision in mind. The clay has to surrender its will and embrace the potter's will. Even the broken pot is not neglected but given attention. He, with special care, mends it and prepares it for a unique function. Our lack of patience, the hurrying lifestyle and tendencies to look for instant results often cripple our becoming and force us to choose what is instantly satisfying. But God is patient with us. He continues His work even in seemingly hopeless situations. of letting go and letting things happen will reward us in full measure. Though the potter hammers the pot externally with one hand, he supports it from within with his other hand. Our God who interacts with his creation, upholds us in frailties and good fortune. He gives us enough strength to bear it all. He never lets his creation in isolation. He takes the pot into his hands and carefully studies the condition of the pot. With the power of his gentle touch and fine movements, the potter makes the pot's inner and outer layers even. God wants us to be persons of integrity. He wants us to have a consistency between what we believe, say and do. The potter adopts manifold ways to bring about her dream project. Every part is carefully blended, giving a complete look. The divine potter is always at work. He has a vision for us, an idea of who we can become and seeks to mold us into that image. Our life is made up of different events. 
Individually, everything may look unrelated. But everything that happens in life has a reason, has a place and a meaning. All these events are connected and together they add vigor and richness to life. Everything is intentional and happens to make us whole. Then the pot is left to dry. The potter then beautifies his creation, giving it a good look. God endows us with many gifts and talents and makes us attractive. Once the pot is dry and hard, the potter applies a glassy coating to his pottery, both as protection and as decoration. Application of glaze makes pottery vessels impermeable to water and other liquids. Every piece he makes is unique in its look, shape, usefulness. So is God's work with humanity. Every person is created in God's own image. Each is given a unique worth and equipped for a specific purpose. Again, it is exposed to the sun to dry 